Hello YouTube world, this is Logic Crazy and I'm Jonathan and here's yet another tutorial on creating a Java chess engine. And in this tutorial we're going to be focusing on where we left off last time with the chess 960. And so all we will be doing is setting it up so that the bit boards represent a random chess 960 uh, situation or starting position. So I will be showing you the code. I've already typed it all out and I'll just go over and explain it um, just to save some time because there's a lot to run through here. And then at the end I will show a few of my favorite links to places where I learn about how to program chess engines from the experts. So be sure to stick with me through the entire video. So uh, Chess 960, if you don't know what it is, look it up on Wikipedia and there's a link uh, to Chess 960 starting position in Wikipedia. And it gives you a, a list of instructions for how to set it up randomly. Uh, and there's pretty much two rules that Chess 960 has for starting up the positions. Uh, that the bishops must be placed on opposite colored squares, which is like normal chess, and the king must be placed on a square between the rooks and that way castling is possible. So those are the two criteria and this is a method of randomly coming up with it in five steps. So we will be programming these five steps here into our engine. So I have here, we've already created this method in the board generation uh, Java file called initiate chess 960. And so I've already written in code here, we create a long which ha contains all the bits or bit boards I should say and it creates all of the uh, <clears throat> let's see all of the pawns already here. It's just quickly checking something because in Chess 960, we know already that pawns go here and here in the uh, row, those rows. And uh, what we'll be doing is creating this array just like we did in standard chess where we first create an array, then turn it to uh, bit boards. Here again, we're creating an array and then we'll turn it into bit boards. So uh, we start off with this and we'll randomly fill in these bottom and top rows. So step one here you'll see in the browser says to pick a random square and place a bishop on it. So what I've done is cr I've created uh, integer random one and I have um, done math.random which provides a number between uh, 0 and 1 excluding 1 and multiplied that by 8. And what that does is it gives you a random number between 1 and 8. And since it's int, it, what it will do is it will make it a whole number and it will forget about decimal places. So this is giving me a random number between one of the 8 squares. Then we set chessboard 0 and 7, that's the bottom and top rows, of our array and set it to uh, the bishops, capital and lowercase as normal. All right, what do we have here in the browser for step two? It says roll the die and place a bishop on the white square indicated. So now that we have placed, um, we need to place it on a different color. Um, so what we have done here is I've again created a new random number. I could reuse uh, some of these things, but uh, not in this case, but its efficiency is not a huge importance right here. Uh, what we have done then is I've said while random and modulus 2, what that does is it finds every second number, basically, or even number. So um, what it does is it says while this is equal to this. So if the first random 2 is an odd number, then while, basically while they're both 
even, or both odd? Well, they're both the same as far as odd and even go. Pick a different random number. You want to wait till odd and even are mismatched, and that will provide a square of a different color. And then set those also to bishops. All right, step three. In the browser, we it says, roll the die and place a queen in the first empty position indicated. Always skipping filled positions. All right. So what we have done is we say, uh, we take another random number, uh, one of eight, and we say, uh, while this uh, random number is the same as one of the places where we place the bishop in random one and random two, find a new random number. So keep looking for new random numbers between uh, one and eight until, or zero and seven, I guess, until it comes up with a spot that is not occupied by a bishop. And then it will set a queen to that location. All right, step four. It says roll the die and place a knight on the empty position indicated. So we basically have the same sort of step, but this time we have come up with a number that only picks from one of five squares because we know that three have already been filled. So it comes up with a random number. This is a little different between one and five. And then it creates this whole loop thing. And basically what it does is it goes through the actual array with this line. Here, I'll let you see the whole thing. Uh, while it's empty, counter plus plus and loop plus plus. And so what it does is it goes through finding, let's say it was four, it finds the fourth empty position and it places its piece right there. All right, and so that is random uh, 4a, and then what it does is it takes the other knight, um, and now there's only four squares, but it does the exact same sort of thing and places a knight there in a random location. So let's say this time it was the third spot, so it places the knight in the third empty location is what this whole code is. And then step five, the last step, it says roll the die and place a knight on the empty position indicated. All right. So for step five, what we have here is three items. Um, um, I suppose uh, step five was the other night. So that's already done. So uh, that was in 4B. Uh, sorry, a little confusing there. And then step five, what we've done is there are three empty sp uh, spaces left. We've put down five pieces, three left to go, and the king needs to be surrounded by rooks on either side. Therefore, the first uh, empty spot which is found by counter using this while loop, has to be a rook. Then you must do this loop finding the next empty spot and put a, a king there, and then do the whole loop and in the last square put a rook. That way the king is sandwiched between two rooks making castling possible according to the chess 960 uh, starting position rules. And then what we have is this line here, arrays to bit boards, and it converts the whole thing. So that is all done, and I will quickly make some changes. You'll notice uh, user interface with Java has also changed, and I'll quickly go through that as well. Uh, but just let me change this. Instead of initiating uh, standard chess, I will initiate chess 960. And you, we will see if we get a valid starting position. You'll notice now there's graphics. I'll go through that really quickly after this. So you'll notice castling is possible. The king is between uh, the rooks. This isn't a regular opening position. The bishops are on different colors. And uh, that is all according to, that is a legal chess 960 opening. So if you ran it again, you'll find 
randomly different. Here the queen was here, I think the queen was over here last time where this bishop was. So that is how chess 960 goes. It's sort of quick, but I got a lot of stuff to go through in this tutorial. And feel free to download the code if you did not have time to write it down in the description below. And you will also want to download a code for sure because I will not give you enough time to write all of this code in the user interface. And in this tutorial, I didn't want to focus too much on graphics and how that all works as I've done in my simple chess tutorials. So I'll just give you a real brief overview of how I've made the graphical thing look. You'll notice, first of all, that uh, I'm still using uh, um, a text output in the console and Q, B, B, N, R, and so on. And you'll notice it matches graphically. Um, to make sure that you have uh, um, that image because each piece is represented by um, like there's graphically drawn out uh, a rook and a king and stuff so there's an image file which contains all of these pieces in it just a PNG I believe it is um, and make sure you download that in the description below as well to get these icons looking right so here's a quick overview of the code. Uh, what we have here is fairly much the same, uh, a bunch of uh, starting variables we've dealt with. Main, and what main sets is new game, which is way at the bottom, and it just initiates, whoops, standard chess, or chess 960. But what I have changed is this whole graphical component, which is, uh, declared as public void paint components. And what it does is it has this whole piece of code is for resizing. So when I resize the board or the uh, frame or window, you'll notice it's all kept intact so that it scales with uh, my resizing. That's what that piece of code does. And then I say draw borders uh, draw board and draw pieces. So for instance, if I took out the draw board and ran it, you'll notice there is no board, just like that. So it looks very different. And uh, I could take out borders or whatever, or pieces. Any one of these things will remove that section. And this should be fairly easy for you guys to read, even if you're not very familiar with uh, with drawing in and graphics in Java. So draw borders, it just sets a bunch of uh, rectangles in a, a loop thing. Drawing pieces, very similar to my uh, simple chess tutorial. And drawing borders, a bunch of uh, other things here. So, uh, as I said, this is uh, it for the programming part, but I want to share a few of my favorite links. And I'll be trying to show a few of my favorite links of things that have helped me get started with programming or maybe just really fun or interesting sites related to chess and programming. So today I want to show you a couple things, uh, two pages in fact. And the first one is with Bitwise stuff. And just in case uh, you're still a little unsure about how Bitwise and Bitboards works, uh, this uh, is an excellent resource just to gloss over. Uh, I'll not be requiring you guys to read it or uh, assuming you guys have, but uh, feel free to use this as an extra source of knowledge. And there are two pages. Uh, if you change the link to page two, and there are the two pages here, little links, it's hard to see, but uh, you can see a uh, whole uh, more on uh, Bitboards and exactly uh, showing you examples and how uh, awesome Bitboards really are. And so feel free to check that out and read it. And the other thing is chessprogramming.wikispaces.com and this is a huge library dedicated to people who want to program chess just like you do and you can find just about anything here uh, learn all sorts of strategies and ways that famous engines have worked and history 
all sorts of really awesome stuff. One link I will point out to you guys, you'll notice uh, in the home page it talks about CPW, uh, which stands for Chess Program Wiki, but they have made uh, an engine. This uh, wiki has made a chess engine just to be able to explain or demonstrate how an engine works. So this is just another example of how a simple programming engine works. And feel free to uh, take a look at all the code and see how each different section works. So you can look at uh, um, the code for any of these pages and just try it out. And you'll notice, as I just quickly scroll through you here, that is heavily commented, which is very... Uh, nice to have and lots and lots of uh, colors and things like that too to make it easy and very readable. So those are two links. Uh, again, these two links will be um, given to you so you don't have to uh, just do a uh, screen capture and type it all in manually. All right, until next time, enjoy Java.